Hey guys, so welcome back to the pod. It's been a minute. I'm trying to remember when was the last time I did like a video recording because this past few episodes have been pre-recorded already, so it's been definitely a minute. So welcome. Uh, I am in my apartment, so we are about to record this episode. It's going to be a solo episode and actually also probably like a short one. It's not going to be very long and we are going to be talking about social media and what's going on these days and mainly about the new things that's been happening because they're so important so if you're into social media you want to learn and hear about what's going on right now definitely tune into this episode but before we get started let's talk a little bit update let me keep you guys posted on what has been going on uh, because that's usually something I do in the beginning of the episodes so let me just preface that a little bit so couple things if you guys haven't uh, like haven't actually probably seen on my social uh, I was in New York and that's why I did the episode with a dermatologist friend of mine and that was really cool so if you definitely want to listen to Botox, fillers, like I don't know, plastic surgery, cosmetics and everything like that definitely check that episode out but also that was like an episode uh, that was like a week that like that was so crazy for me I feel like my that was I think my second time or third time visiting uh, New York again ever since I moved here so definitely feels a bit different now uh, I think I will always see New York as my home that is for sure doesn't matter where I'm going or where I'm moving per se but I think uh, it just felt different this time around because I think many other times I kind of felt like I don't know I felt sad being back in New York because I was like oh like I had my life here and like I don't know like I was just living here I don't know like my, a lot of like pretty much my whole life so and now I'm just like wow I'm just visiting so it doesn't feel as I don't know like sad anymore it feels you know way nice to connect with people uh, because I feel like this past trip I get to do some work I get to meet my friends and meet my dad and like do regular things that I used to do like I was living in New York so it kind of felt nice because I think other many other occasions that the past two occasions it was kind of different I think it's because maybe it reminded me so many things uh, like I used to do with my ex because like you know my breakup is still not that like it's not that long it hasn't even been a year so uh, that it definitely felt raw first time visiting New York after the move so I remember back in March when I first visited New York it was definitely rough and I think emotions were coming up to me and like I don't know it was it was very like I don't know, it, was, it felt very sad for the first two days, uh, but the, I'm just sharing this experience because I want to share how it would feel like for someone who's moving from their hometown or the place that they used, they used to call home and moving to somewhere else and if they're visiting it back again. I think if New York was the place for me to just, I don't know, like uh, just workplace or something, I don't think I would feel this kind of way, but I think it's because New York is a place that, I don't know, it's, I, I feel like, I'm, I don't know why I'm getting emotional because I wasn't even expecting this, but I think it's kind of a place for me that I started my career, uh, my family's there and like my friends are there, uh, so I think it's always going to have a special place for me, but I think this would also maybe resonate with many people who call a uh, certain, you know, who call the place home and like going back home certainly feels different. But I think it definitely feels gets better as you visit more often, and that's what I've been feeling lately. That like it's like third time visiting, I was like, oh, this feels better. I don't feel sad anymore. I don't feel as homesick anymore uh, because I think it was definitely tough in the beginning. Uh, because I think as much as I have friends here, but well, I don't know why I'm getting emotional. This is so crazy. I was not expecting this. Uh, as much as I made friends here and at all, but I think New York definitely has a different place in in my heart. That as much as I have complained about it so much <laughs> as I was living there, and I I don't know. Wow, this is not what I was expecting. But I think it definitely has certain special place in my heart, and um, 
I don't know, I feel like it's always going to have a that kind of place in my heart. But I want to share that it is definitely feeling <laughs> getting better. But I don't know why all of a sudden I'm getting like this emotional because I think I don't know what's going on. <laughs> um, I just wanted to share that part and I was not expecting this would happen. I think it's just because I'm remembering many things that have happened along the way. While I was in New York, I have had many milestones uh, in New York. So like that happened in New York. So I feel like that's why it's so, so special. And I don't think I will ever, you know, forget that. Even if I move thousands of miles away from it, but yeah, just like preface of my trip. But now I have another trip that's coming up. I feel like this summer is going by so fast because we're already in July and like this July is going to end so quickly. It literally just started a month, but it's ending already. Uh, but I'm going to LA and I'm so, so excited for this trip because I last time I was in LA, that was probably two years ago and in the beginning of pandemic. I have been to LA after that, but I only passed by. I was only staying one night, so it doesn't, I don't really count that. But that was the beginning. Um, that was the time that I was like just, just starting in a relationship, just started being in a relationship with my ex. So it was very new. The pandemic wasn't going on, so it was so different. So I'm very excited to go there and see how it is right now. And like, I really miss LA so much, and I miss the food there, I miss the lifestyle. I missed so many things, so I'm so, so excited. So definitely gonna keep you guys posted. So if you don't, do wanna see uh, all the stories and all the pictures, definitely follow me on social. Uh, I will post it definitely on my YouTube channel, like vlog, but I will also post it like pictures on my Instagram and other apps that I'm gonna mention on this episode. So we're gonna get into it right now. So that's a little update, but now let's get on to social media talk and let's talk about what's going on honestly there's a lot to talk about on social media today's podcast is brought to you by our partner mint mobile so once again i want to talk about mint mobile because i just feel like these days we are spending so much money on so many things like starting from as little as like groceries to as big purchases like rent everything is just so expensive and I just feel like there is no need to spend extra for something that you can find cheaper for the same service or for the same thing and that's what I love about Mint Mobile they offer one of the greatest services in terms of the premium wireless phone service plan for literally the same service they have like the same coverage same data same speed but for less price and they are built on nation's largest 5g network the difference is because they sell directly to you hence they can keep the cost low because there's no retail stores no salespeople. and the best part i like about them is that like everything is so fast the process of it because if you have eSIM technology on your iphone or on your phone you can just go to their website and buy the number that you want and you can activate it right away there it is you have the phone number I literally just did that for my business and I'm using that phone for my business super easy you can just go to minmobile.com slash WB to use my code and you can just get started for as low as $15 a month I think that's such a great deal in this economy so don't forget to take this opportunity go to minmobile.com slash WB Oh, this is so good. Definitely give it a shot. Matcha oat milk latte. Uh, delicious. Anyway, so let's talk about the elephant in the room, which you guys might probably already heard of by now. Threads. So if you don't know and if you haven't heard of it yet, let me explain a little bit. Threads is a new app that is created by Instagram or we, let's just call it like sister of Instagram, but it's essentially created by Meta. And if you don't know what Meta is, it's the Facebook company. Well, they used to call it Facebook Inc. Now it's Meta, which owns companies like WhatsApp, Instagram, um, Messenger, now Threads, and I think there's another one, Meta Suites or something else. Anyway, so they're all owned by the same company. Now they started this new app called Threads. And according to rumors, th these are rumors, I'm not sure if these are like true. 
um, allegedly, so. Because Twitter uh, laid off a bunch of employees, like, a couple months ago. And essentially, Mark Zuckerberg, who is the CEO of Meta, he hired these people from Twitter and was like, I am bored, I want to dominate the entire social media industry, I just want to copy and paste again, so I'm going to create a new Twitter app called Threads. And if you guys are not familiar with whole strategy behind Mark Zuckerberg's like apps, let me, let me start saying that. So if you are not familiar, Snapchat, which is not as popular nowadays, but also it's still being used a lot still these days, is part of Snapchat is copied by Instagram. The Instagram stories we are calling these days never existed and it wasn't such a new idea. It was essentially copied from Snapchat. Then Instagram incorporated that. Then later there was like, you know, Instagram was like, oh, you want to make it more like YouTube. So that's what they included. They started IGTV, which didn't necessarily work out. So they, they ended IGTV. Then now when TikTok came around, Instagram was like, we're going to dominate it. We want to buy TikTok out. And I'm sure they made the offer. And they did the same thing for Snapchat as well. But they both refused, obviously. And Instagram started IG Reels, which... I just feel was like, it's a hit or miss. I'm not sure how long it's gonna stay per se, because I think they had IG Reels bonuses for creators, and I was benefiting from that. I was getting like a decent amount every month, and that definitely did affect my revenue stream, so I am definitely pissed about that, and it's not just me, there are a bunch of other creators who are pissed about that, but just putting it out there. And now, they were like, well, we haven't really touched into the text-based social media. Let's check it out and let's see what we can do. And let me tell you guys a little bit about how this works. But also, let me tell you guys why this is like much better time now for them to do it versus like other apps. Because I think the time when Instagram copied Snapchat or tried to copy YouTube or, um, I don't know, TikTok... It was a different story because those platforms were still doing so well. It wasn't like they were they were suffering, they were on the verge of bankruptcy, they were like they were doing amazing. They were so so popular and the whole reason Instagram did that was because they were losing their market share and they were losing um, like traffic to they were losing users, active users, so they were like you're going to copy it. Right now, it's a different story because let me talk about Twitter a little bit. First off, I have never been a Twitter person. Like, I, I think that's a, probably the first social media platform that I have created an account on back in 2013 or 2012. First account that I have ever created on the internet, I think. Unless I'm mistaken if there's something else, but that's probably one of the earlier platforms I've created because I never had Facebook account. I always use some other people's accounts, then I create my Instagram later. So it was that one and Twitter has never been my thing because I would share certain things, but people never resonated with it. And Twitter was always full of like news and like political stuff. So it was never for me. So I never really like the concept per se, never liked the idea, then afterwards obviously like I never really tried it and also like advertising or sponsorship on Twitter is very complicated, it's not like a lot, it's not very monetized, uh, like I think the way it works is like I think the way to make money on Twitter is very difficult because I think the way that all the platforms like make do ads is like or like advertising like on Instagram, Twitter, I mean TikTok or YouTube, there's a lot of advertising revenue that goes towards it, especially influencers. But Twitter is a different story. Yes, there are but there are a couple um, ads that I would see, but it's not very it's not a lot. Monetizing it's not a platform that you would monetize a lot. You would maybe run ads, but you wouldn't spend too much money on uh, influencers and stuff. But then OnlyFans came around, 
hence Twitter became a big thing because you can post obviously explicit content, adult content, hence that really became super popular. Nowadays I feel like that's why the Twitter became such a big thing, like people who are adult creators, uh, adult content creators, they could use Twitter to promote their videos and content and make money. So that's what Twitter became about and I was not about that world and not necessarily anything wrong with it but just that's not my field hence I kind of gave up on that because Twitter was never my thing. And I only had like a couple thousand followers so I was like, well, it's not a lot. But now I think what happened this time around was this. So after Twitter got bought by Elon Musk, first let me say from a business perspective because I have, I know maybe some of you guys don't care then you can skip this next five minutes, but Twitter I think was saying like they have like, I don't know, like 30, 30, 33 millions of active users. That was kind of a lie I think and also when they were evaluated, I think they were maybe worth less than like, they were maybe worth like 10, 15 billion dollars, um, but I think, in, I mean like what was the word for it, million dollars and, but then um, I think uh, Elon Musk was like offering like 44 million or something. Um, it was like, I think it was very overpriced. I think 44 or 43. Then he wanted to back off because he's like, oh, this is not like a good idea. I don't want to do it. But then he had to do it because he gave the offer and he couldn't back off because they were suing him. So anyways, he had to sell his stocks from Tesla, <laughs> then had to buy the company essentially. He was stuck. He essentially messed up, in other words. Now, coming to this, when he took over the ownership, he's like, I have to make money and stuff like that. Then he started a subscription base, you can pay for Twitter Blue and stuff like that. Then that was bringing some revenue. But I think they were still losing money, so they started laying off people. That started one way of like rumors and everything, like Twitter is not doing so well. And very recently, they started a limitation like this that I think it's because their server cost is getting a lot higher and they couldn't keep up with it. You have to remember, if you're not a technical person, you can, it would maybe hard for you to understand, but every website has a server or it's on a server, connected to the server. Whenever you're, you're, open, you're uploading a picture, a video, it's taking a space in a server. And like site owner, like which in this case Elon Musk, has to pay for that. It's like whatever you're posting, he has to pay for that. So you have to remember that costs a lot of money, so much money. So um, I guess like that was costing money for them. So they even started like the limitation of like, you can only view maybe like 600 posts a day or something, which is kind of ridiculous, very, very ridiculous. So anyways, that's kind of what's happening. People were getting frustrated. I honestly didn't, again, this is like, I didn't even know about this. I just did the research so you guys know. So this was a perfect time for Meta to start the Threads app because people were frustrated with Twitter. But I think they are trying to make it like almost separate. Yes, Twitter competitor, but I don't think it's the same app per se. I think it's a lot different and I hope that it stays like this because it's the beginning of it and they're, they're losing, they don't have many features but I think it's the beginning of it and it would be cool. Now let me explain how different it is. First of all, it's, it is a new app, that is for sure, but the way they made this, and it's super smart, and I mean very smart, but also kind of tricky in a way, like very shady, a little bit shady, a little bit shady, actually it's shady. I'm not gonna say a little bit shady, it's kind of shady. Essentially, if you have Instagram, you already kind of have, have an account have Threads account. You're gonna be like, but I never signed up. So it doesn't work like that. It's like essentially, they, they I think made, they I, I think transferred all the users who had Instagram account to this new app called uh, Threads. Not even transferred, they duplicated essentially. So essentially if you have Instagram account, you already have Threads account. But until you log into Threads app and activate it, it's not gonna show up, which means it's 
pre-populated for you, pre-created for you essentially, but it's not there yet. So it needs to be activated by you. When you log in, it's just going to be activated. So that's why they are, when, you, when they were saying that on the first couple days, they already had like 30 million signups and stuff. It's because they made it super easy to activate it. They're calling it sign up, but I'm going to say like it was already created. You're just activating the profile. Because what happens is like when you first sign in, uh, and like you put like it can import everything from your Instagram It's you will see like follow requests and you're like, but my profile is not private if your pu Profile is private different story, but if your profile is public you're like why do I have a follow request? It's because people already started following you before you even created the account because your account was already created before You see right like because like once you log in and you're trying to sign in, it's gonna say like follow all the people that you're already following. You see like super smart. The way the strategy is like so that means that you don't have to start from scratch. Whoever you are following, whoever the audience that you have on Instagram, it's essentially gonna transfer over to this app. A very very smart concept and most people don't care so they just press follow all. I didn't do that. I'm just like um, you're not getting that, sorry. I feel like seeing people's Instagram photos is one thing, but seeing people's like what they text, it's another thing. So I'm like, I don't know if I want to see that. Thank you, but no thank you. So I just select a few people. I'm like, rest of you, if you follow me, I will see and I will check. I will see what you're posting, but that's it. Anyways, now let's talk about the app itself, first impression. Because first three days, I pretty much spent all my time on threads because I was like, what the hell is going on? Let me find this app. It's definitely fun because I think... The way what was missing on Twitter for the longest time, and I have to be honest with this, is that it is such a serious place in many ways. Even with like the adult content, because like for someone who's just like, yes, adult content is one thing, but also like someone who just wants to use it for fun, it's not a fun place. It's like when you're posting about something fun, it's like no one is literally listening or doing anything. It's very dead platform in many ways. Interactions, engagement is so low. So I never liked it in the first place. That's what makes it so different about threads. It's like people are posting like fun stuff, like memes and like they're complaining about their boss. And I don't know, like something super casual, super chill. Like it's nothing super serious. There's a few things that people are cross promoting, but nothing over the top. Very casual platform. It almost feels like you're talking to a friend or a community of people. Like it doesn't feel serious. It feels fun. And I think that's what's like so catchy about it. Like everyone is sharing something behind the scenes, something like uh, not overly edited, stuff like that. There are people, again, sharing pictures and stuff, but like nothing over the top. I, until this moment, I haven't seen any like more close up pictures of Zuck, uh, like Zuckerberg, Mark Zuckerberg, or like his like, I don't know, kids or like his wife. Like I just saw it there. That's what I'm saying. It's like showing more of you, more personal side of you. And like some things that people share about themselves, like in a text, I'm like, I agree with this. Like someone was just talking about like, what is like a superior soda? And we were just, I was just saying like ginger ale. Like I want to have this kind of conversation on Instagram. I, like I would love to put it on stories, but like no one's going to give a shit. Like maybe in a way, but like nobody's going to listen. But you can now share that. And I wanted to always have that in a way on Twitter, but like again, nobody gave a shit on Twitter. So that's why like it's kind of cool on Threads app. I'm like loving it so far. There's like so many few things that people are sharing that like you're like, oh, like this is fun. Like I think the, the best one I would say is like really like next level marketing, like 10 out of 10 if you want to go check it out. Go to Gymshark's, Gymshark's account on Threads. And I think Jim Shark was like, I'm trying to like figure out threads, like I don't know what to do. Like telling my boss that like, yeah, I'm working on other apps too, but like I have been spending past 30 days on threads and trying to figure out like what the hell I do. <laughs> and that's like so funny and it's true because like all the social media managers, they're like, what? Another platform for me to manage another strategy? Like I don't have any strategy. Like I don't know what to do. 
and they even posted like a thing that like I'm posting whatever I want in here until my boss sees then we will deal with like consequences later then he puts like a letter that he got from his boss like email that like you like posted some things without like our um, explicit uh, without explicitly discussing with me and that's why like you're getting written up and like I'm like top notch today's episode is brought to you by Liquid Ivy Liquid IV is a category winning hydration brand fueling your well being. And their hydration multiplier is the one product you're missing in your daily routine. In just one stick, you get five essential vitamins and two times faster hydration than water alone. Use it first thing in the morning, before a workout, or when you just feel run down, after a long night out, especially after like a lot of alcohol intake, and also on just long flights. I love that it comes in individual packets so you can take it wherever with you and easily just mix it in your water. I keep one in my car, well actually a couple in my car, one in my backpack, one in my like travel bag so I never run out. Liquid IV partners with leading organizations for innovative solutions to help communities to protect both their water and their futures. To this date, Liquid IV has donated over 39 million servings in 50 plus countries around the world. Get 20% off when you go to liquidiv.com and use code WB at checkout. That is 20% off anything you order when you shop Better Hydration today using promo code WB at liquidiv.com. I think unlike Instagram, yes, you have like, what is it? Uh, collaborate feature and everything, but you can repost, you can quote tweet, or quote thread, right? Like from other people's profiles and stuff. And you can even see people's replies to other things too. It's like such a fun, interactive platform. I think they're still working on the feed itself, like what is showing up. Cause it's kind of mixed of like following and also popular content. And I think they're definitely gonna mix it up as like this popular and following and they're gonna add DMs and other features. But so far it has, I think, 100 million signups which is insane because it's been like barely a week that this uh, app has been active. And I'm just saying the entire reason even this is like doing so well is because people have been wanting this for the longest time. Even before Elon Musk, Twitter has been going down. Like it has been bad. Only thing I'm hoping from this is the fact that I hope this doesn't become political. This doesn't like, uh, include news and stuff because I personally just don't want to see it. I don't care for it and I don't want them to force it on us. But like that's just like, I don't know, it's going to be toxic. Now like since I talked about essentially their pros or like good things about uh, threads, let me talk about cons because let's be real, it's made by Instagram, meaning Zuckerberg. So they do own a lot of our data. So we knew this and we are not like surprised by this. But now they're gonna get more data from this. And on top of it, because how Threads has been created so far, it's connected through your Instagram. First, you don't necessarily have a choice essentially deleted yet because Threads account is linked to your Instagram. Meaning if you want to delete your Threads account, you have to delete your Instagram. They said they are working on this, but it's not like it's not there yet. So that's one thing to think about. Obviously, they still own somewhat of your data. That's why I'm hoping that they don't use this against us during elections and stuff, because I quite frankly don't care. Like, leave me alone from political stuff, from news. I don't want to see it unless I want to look for it personally myself, but I'll just go on Google. Like, I don't care for this. You know what I mean? So like, leave me alone. I'm good. I'm gonna watch, I'm gonna listen to some celebrities, I want people to complain about their bagels and croissants and iced coffee, that's what I'm gonna hear. I don't care, I don't give a shit about your political views, I don't care about what happened in that state, whatever, I don't care who died, where, I'm sorry, I just don't care. If I wanna see the news, if I wanted to watch something that was depressing as hell, I would turn on the TV or I would watch it on YouTube or something, I'm, I'm just saying, like, don't bring it here. 
that's what I'm gonna be pissed about. So I'm just gonna put that out there. And I'm pretty sure I'm not just the only one who's saying this. A lot of us are in the same boat. So just putting that out there. But I think there are so many things about this app. It's still not very clear. So we will see where this essentially goes. But that's what I'm trying to say. Like if you're concerned about your say, like your privacy or your data per se, probably you shouldn't sign up and sign up what I mean like sign in because right now it's still technically inactive per se but as soon as you activate it's essentially there so then don't sign in if you're not interested but it's definitely a fun app to check it out and see what's going on honestly we will see where this is gonna go but I feel like I can see a potential future with this because I think even before this Twitter was not doing well as I mentioned to you guys they were trying so many ways to like increase their revenue, increase their market share. And they are losing traffic right now. People are flooding to threads, but I just don't think threads is gonna be the same thing as Twitter. It's com it's a competitor for sure, and Elon Musk is definitely pissed about it. That like he's like Zuckerberg copied. In a way I can see that for sure, but I think they can both still survive, and that's my opinion. I think if they keep these two things that I was just mentioning separately, because I think Threads seems like a platform that it's like you can share fun stuff, uh, comedic stuff, like memes and like some day-to-day -day stuff, nothing political, nothing news stuff related, and nothing adult content. I don't think it's gonna be a place for that. I think if you wanna share news, uh, political opinion about something going on or adult related content or adult content I think that will be Twitter if they're still in the market but I think that's what's going to be in this way I feel like they both have a room in this industry to play around and I feel like that would be a, that would be actually a good feature and I think this would be also a good thing for a bunch of other influencers because our following is kind of getting trans transferred over to this platform but again not all of it you have to remember just because you have I don't know 100k followers 1 million followers doesn't mean that all million of them is going to transfer over to threads it's because they have to activate it and follow it to transfer over there just because they activate it doesn't mean it's going to transfer over because if they don't click follow all because when you first sign up it says follow all the people you're following yes Auto uh, default, it's it's placed as follow all. But some people may say, I don't know, follow all. So you have to remember, that's why in that way, it's not gonna transfer over all the way. But I think at least one or 2% or maybe 5% of your audience is gonna click follow all and you're gonna have some sort of following. That's why you, like, you would see is like people who have millions of followers, they probably have like at least 20, 30K followers already on threads is because the percentage is like 2% or something and same for me it's like I had like 50 60k followers and I have like two three two thousand something followers you see right like that that ratio kind of adds up as I think maybe more people signs up and follow requests goes along and people follow we'll have more followers and I feel like this would be maybe the beginning of um, another platform for um, I, obviously influencers to use because it's still a new platform I don't think they're going to be ads for a year or so at least because usually they don't start the ads like adding ads that soon because they have to get used to the platform make it user friendly and add features so it's probably gonna take about two years but I think that could be a beginning of another platform for influencers so I am curious to see how that will go but it's still a great platform for anyone else who wants to just use it and have fun with it and never like Twitter in the first place like me I think it's gonna be such a fun place so definitely go check it out not sponsored or any way possible I just enjoyed it so this was like the recent thing with social media so I want to share my thoughts on it so if you guys loved it or checked it out or want to sign up or have some thoughts about it Definitely leave comments below. I want to hear it. And if you do love this episode, please, please, it means so much to me and it helps so much tremendously to this podcast. Subscribe and leave a review on Spotify or Apple Podcasts. And I'll see you guys next week with another episode.